What is your favorite animal? What video game has your favorite music? What looks better when it's wet? A plant. Summer sun hitting droplets on leaves. Spoken like a true poet. Definitely rocks. A spider web. The drops of dew highlight each strand like a row of glimmering beads. It's beautiful. Grapes. The Mississippi River. Sad upvote. We need more water in that thing. Those pills that turn into dinosaur-shaped sponges when you add water to them. I miss those things. Dreams. Bro? You can't see because, you know, it's just a, it's just a, I'm just a voice. But I'm doing the rock eyebrow with the vine boom. You know. <laughs> what do you think is the number one Christmas movie of all time? The Year Without a Santa Claus. I've always been a sucker for claymation. Yeah, and the songs in that one are so good, like Blue Christmas and the Snow Miser Heat Miser songs. Oh my god, I could sing those ones all day long. Everyone has already said the usual suspects, so I wanted to give a nod to a more recent, maybe less known one. Klaus! It's on Netflix, and it about makes me cry every time. Love that one. It is a really good one, so if you have Netflix and you haven't seen Klaus, maybe watch it this year. It's damn near 100 years old, but It's a Wonderful Life still does it for me. The Muppets Christmas Carol, Home Alone, Charlie Brown Christmas, or It's a Wonderful Life. Scrooged. It's a personal favorite. What's the dumbest reason someone broke up with you? Because her friends broke up with their boyfriends. Ah, yes. We love peer pressure. We love being with the crowd. Yes, sir. I visited my dad while he was in the hospital with cancer. She broke up with me because I was visiting my dying dad instead of visiting her. I feel like I dodged a major bullet. You dodged the whole gun. <laughs> you dodged the whole gun, the whole, the whole thing. No joke joke? Her mood ring changed colors. No shot. Is that real? <laughs> oh, goodness. Car was too old. Dropped her. Car is still chugging along. You've been really sad ever since I cheated on you, and I don't like that, so bye. She broke up with you because you were upset she cheated on you. Oh, man. That's tough, buddy. My first boyfriend came over and dumped me on my front porch. He said he didn't like my lisp. He also had a lisp. Edit. Some of you are so insensitive. Was convinced I was cheating on them with my gay cousin. Whoa, my God. That was from outfield. What is a non-negotiable rule in your house for everyone? Don't tap on the aquarium glass. Clean up after yourself. If there is a cat on your lap, you don't have to get up for any reason. If there is food in the house, it is available to anyone, company included. One of the biggest rules is actually for when people are leaving my home. It's a very simple one. Text me when you get home safely. That's wholesome. And once I own a house, that'll be my number one rule. If I ever have people over, I, I, have, I don't have very many friends. <laughs> Hit the fan before you <laughs> We argue about pizza toppings all the time, but what burger crimes have you witnessed? Burgers that are too tall. I don't want to dislocate my jaw eating that thing. Make burgers wide, not tall. Having toppings that make the bun soggy or just fall off when you try to take a bite out of it. There's an easy solution to this one. Toast your buns. Toast your buns. Cheeseburger, but with sweet blueberries inside the patties. Am I a gross, disgusting son of a B word? If I say that this sounds not bad and I would probably try it. I really like fruit. I really like blueberries. They're really good. A girl at my work put shrimp and broccoli on a Big Mac before. Gross. <laughs> Nasty. Putting shrimp on a Big Mac? Broccoli, I mean, it just kind of like cancels out the un unhealthy bits, right? Right? I live in Japan. 99% of the burgers are a crime. You never know when you'll get a crunchy patty because the gristles get ground up too. Ew! Uh, no. No. Soggy lettuce. If the lettuce ain't crisp, you must acquit. I don't think that catchphrase is going to stick around, buddy. Maybe uh, try something else. Those stupid food prawn burgers where they pour melted cheese all over the bloody thing. Look, it's a cheeseburger, not a burger cheese. I would like some cheese with my burger, but I don't want the whole plate filled up with it and I can't even see my freaking burger. Witnessed a freaking war crime in front of my very eyes. Banana slices in a cheeseburger. Now, I know I just said fruit on a burger doesn't sound that bad. This sounds awful. <laughs> what natural thing seems fake? Katatumbo lightning, also known as the beacon of Maracay Kaibo, or the Everlasting Storm, is seasonal lightning around Lake Maracaibo in northern Venezuela. The region endures more than 160 storm nights a year, nine hours per day, and with lightning flashes from 16 to 40 times per minute. That just sounds like there's a legendary Pokemon at that lake. Might want to go check it out. Bring your Master Ball. Caterpillar Metamorphosis. Their bodies break down inside the chrysalis and reconstruct into something new. Geodes. You open up a plain looking rock and there's suddenly a bunch of bright colorful stuff in there? No way, man. The different shapes that show up when you place sand 
hand over a speaker and see the sound wave patterns. Water that's so calm it looks like glass. Peacock tails. So intricate, like someone crocheted it, and the colors are mythical. We fantasize about unicorns, and I'm over here yelling, but we have peacocks. The northern lights. Aurora Borealis. Snowflakes. When you look at them up close, the details and individual design of each one is insane. The way cashews grow. A lot of Australia's natural fauna. Asparagus grows like someone is trying to trick you into thinking that's how it grows. Literally just looks like you bought some at the store and stuck it in the dirt. I worked one summer on a pot farm that used to be an asparagus field, and remember, I'm just being absolutely baffled. I had a bonsai tree I watered for a year before realizing it was fake. I'm still confused by where all the water went. The Grand Canyon. When you see it with your own eyes, it totally looks like a film backdrop. Photos don't do it justice. What's the worst Christmas gift you've received that you had to pretend you like? A set of miniature butter knives with ceramic fruit and vegetables as the handles. From an aunt who said that I was so hard to shop for. I was seven. Oh my god. <laughs> that's, that's, I mean, that seems like it would be a nice quaint gift for your third cousin once removed that you've met twice and you know that they like, I don't know, exotic cheese. But yeah, sure, whatever. A Lamborghini calendar. My brother got a guitar and an amp. My two sisters got a bike each. Fork, I hate Lamborghinis now. When I was in grade school, I liked to wear my fingernails long, but my mom hated it. Every single year for Christmas, she would give me nail clippers. And every single year, my sister would give me a diary because the first year they did it, I was stupid enough to use it, but then my whole family turned out to be reading it. So every year after that, I opened my new diary and thanked her, but never touched it again. Eons ago, I worked for a company owned by the richest man in Minnesota. One year, all of us peons, and there were a couple thousand of us, got a copy of his book. It was all about how he became the richest man in Minnesota. Cheap bastard. Yeah, I probably would have put in my two weeks on the spot there. Whew. Talk about, like, rude and pretentious. Titanic DVD. Pirated copy. Already seen it before twice. It didn't have a case. Just had Titanic written in marker pen. It didn't belong to the person who gifted it. The DVD was scratched and didn't even play. But it's the thought that counts, right? A dish towel. I was eight years old. Yeah, it was a sign to go clean up Christmas dinner after we're done with it. You, you little child. Go do your chores. No allowance. When my brother was about four years old, someone gifted him a Backstreet Boys CD, and when he opened it, he said, oh, no thank you, while shaking his head. Lol, so polite. Reminds me of that vine. An avocado. Thanks. I have a three-year-old student who is a very serious kid. He comes two days a week and has never been thrilled with school. He had a great day last week, and I asked him if he had fun. In a very happy tone, he said, yeah, I did. Abrupt switch to serious face. But now it's time for me to go home. I'm done. I'll come back and see you on Tuesday. My dad bought his girlfriend boobs for Christmas and got my brother a MacBook. I got a doll that I already had. What's the most fork you present you can give someone for Christmas? A blockbuster gift card, if you can ever get your hands on one of them. My mom once gave me an inflatable dartboard. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Regifting a gift basket, but it's obvious that you took out some items that you liked. Regift them what they gave you last year. I don't think I can hang on to one thing for an entire year with the intention of being petty. I'd probably throw it away by then. Rose Arts Craft Supplies. What's wrong with Rose Art? Rose Art was good. I mean, it wasn't Crayola. It wasn't, you know, the, the, the number one stuff, but Rose Arts is good. It's not bad. I gave my four-year-old niece a 30-pack of colored glitter glue. The fork you was to my husband's sister-in-law. Make a donation in their name to a charity, cause, or organization that is in opposition to their beliefs. Then give them the thank you email receipt from the donation in a Christmas card, or better yet, wrap it up in a big box. Address deliberately two sizes too small, and then when unwrapping it on Christmas, they tell you, it's for motivation. Fork you, Judy. A $5 Starbucks gift card. Very few drinks on the menu are less than $5. They'll most certainly have to pay the difference on the first and only use. A book of how to overcome gambling addiction in front of the whole family. Want to place bets on how quick I finish reading this? If they are a parent, gift their kids something that makes noise. What is a clear sign a movie sucks? If it's past 2005 and it has Adam Sandler in it. <laughs> Sequel without the original cast. Edit, thanks for all the upvotes, everyone. I've never had a post I got off like this before. When it's so dark, you can't see anything. Frank Capra had a great quote for my answer. There are no rules in filmmaking, only sins, and the cardinal sin is dullness. From the twisted minds that brought you. You start making fun of the character's logic not even 10 minutes into the film. Straight to v <laughs> VHS in 2022. When it's leading production names, e.g. director, have only made bad films. Or when the director is Alan Smithy or Tom
Tommy Wiseau. Generic pop songs for the soundtrack. Yeah, like trolls. Movies that tell and don't show. When the trailer has a slow, melancholy version of a popular, upbeat song. So we're just talking about, like, Lord's rendition of Everybody Wants to Rule the World from The Hunger Games, right? That's the first one that came to mind. And the boy, I tell you, that version sucks. And I, I don't li I don't hate Lord. I like Lord. But oh my Lord, that song is bad. Tears for Fears did it right. If James Corden plays an animal, it's on the avoid list for me. Scratch that. James Corden in general. That's what I be saying. We need to eradicate James Corden from Hollywood. Because everything he touches, it's like the Midas touch. Except instead of gold, it's shit. <laughs> the movie's poster says the kissing booth. Fair enough. So, hikers of Reddit, what is the strangest thing you've seen on the trails? Not my story, but my dad's actually. I was probably around eight or nine and was around the corner while my dad and his friend were ahead of us. They were having a conversation about trees falling in the woods and if they make a sound. My dad says if a tree falls in the woods and a huge oak fell right in front of them, blocking the rest of the trail. Myself and the other kid ran to see what happened around the bend because we heard the crash and my dad and his friend looked like they had just seen a ghost. Whoa. In a swamp in Florida, I found a picture of a high school age girl, looked like a graduation picture, stabbed into the ground by a kitchen knife and surrounded by black candles. Also had an old naked barefoot hippie lady come jogging up on a mountain past me on the Blue Ridge Parkway in North Carolina. Great. <laughs> I mean, sure. Awesome, dude. A man resembling Santa wearing nothing but granny panties. That's what he does in the off season. I was out for a run on a trail and heard this awful animalistic groaning sound. Like any idiot in a horror movie, I kept going to see what it was. I rounded the bend and there next to an idyllic scream were two massive alligator snapping turtles engaging in coitus. The one mounting the other, one actually made eye contact with me while he kept humping. 20 years later and I'm still traumatized. A horse having its bum licked by a goat that was on a rock. Like as if it was standing on a like a box to reach the horse better. It's always weird seeing clothing, but even weirder, I've seen strollers and hiking trails. Usually the easier ones, of course, but like why did the person think they could bring a stroller on a trail and why did they abandon it? I've seen it multiple times. Some people just don't think very well. Two guys digging a hole at 2 a.m. It was weird. They noticed us and called us over, but we just took off running. They just wanted to show you that they were not digging a shallow grave. What's your controversial music opinion? Some people might not be the best musicians, but they put so much emotion into the music that for me, it's as good or even better than a perfectly performed song. It sucks when people overdo the Star Spangled Banner. Come on, just leave it alone. I just think we shouldn't be singing the Star Spangled Banner as much anyway. A national anthem is not the place to show off. Sing it with heart, but I don't want to hear your Mariah Carey impression. Simply put, Jack Black's rendition is the single best version ever sung. Clean, powerful, and simple. Flashbacks to Fergie's performance of the U.S. National Anthem. Most of you who can't find good modern music are just really bad at looking for it. This holds true for every genre. The Killers are secretly a Christian rock band. Britney Spears' hit songs depicted her struggles. Hit me, baby. Toxic. I'm a slave. Damn, you're right. Just because something is catchy doesn't mean it's good. Adam Levine's falsetto is a strain on my poor ears. OP wanted controversial music opinions. At this point, the controversial opinion is liking anything about Adam Levine. Hey, guys, come on. O old Maroon 5 is good. Old Maroon 5. Not new Maroon 5, and definitely not new Adam Levine. <laughs> Complex music is not necessarily better music. One chord is fine. Two chords are pushing it. Three chords, and you're into jazz. Lou Reed. Let me write a 10 chord intro to a three chord song. Also Lou Reed. People who play their music in a shared dorm or public space without headphones have the shittiest taste in music. People have read it. What was your, man, how did I not do this sooner moment? Pretty generic answer, but regularly working out. Been at it for about three months now. I'm seeing some great muscle definition. I have stretch marks on my arms, chest, and legs. I have more energy in my day-to-day -day life. I'm eating better as a result. My sleep is generally more restful. My mental health is on the upswing. Too many benefits to not keep at it. Getting seven to eight hours of sleep every night. Yeah, in my dreams. D&D. &D. I should have played it sooner. It's absolutely chaotically amazing. Getting a credit card to pay off a credit card. It sounded crazy, but I could pretty much only afford to pay the fees. <coughs> then someone suggested an interest-free credit card with the free balance transfer. All of a sudden, all I was paying was reducing the debt. Stopped arguing with random strangers on the internet. Source? No, you didn't. <laughs> Deleting my Facebook account. Not even kidding. It was a tremendous improvement to my quality of life. I did this this year, and uh, I love it. Not having a Facebook and not seeing what any of my like relatives or people that I knew from high school post? It's awesome. What childish thing do you still do and don't plan on ever stopping? Sliding on hardwood floors in your socks. 
During autumn, I go out of my way to shuffle through piles of leaves when I'm walking. Throwing stones into the water, it's very satisfying. Avoiding stepping on sidewalk lines and cracks. Riding a shopping cart across the parking lot, always satisfying. Hug my stuffed animal. Swing on swing sets. LOL. Who is this generation's greatest artist? Define this generation. Define artist. Define, define. Define. <laughs> this thread is a dumpster fire. The question was gasoline. Dylan, which one? I can only think of two off the top of my head and one's not even a singer. And the other one's not part of this generation. I thought of Bob Dylan and Dylan Sprouse from, from Zack and Cody and nothing else. For the current generation, there's a guy on TikTok with a duck. That is kind of funny. That's about it. Tommy Wiseau. No. <laughs> the two or three companies that write and produce all the top 40 music these days. Danny DeVito. Donald Glover. Music, acting, and comedy. I don't know. I feel like Glover stole a lot of his best stuff from Childish Gambino. Glover and Gambino can't hold a torch to the guy that played Troy from Community. Harambe. Guys, it's been six years. Let go of the freaking gorilla. The jokes aren't funny anymore. Sacha Baron Cohen. Mia Khalifa. I don't know who that is. Who had the biggest fall from grace in history? By the time I was a child, Bill Cosby was so universally recognized as an icon of wholesome comedy that one of the most popular kid shows of my youth was literally just a cartoon about his childhood. Now the legacy of that little cartoon show is tainted by the very subject of the show itself. That's a fall from grace. From being trusted to be a part of your kid's formative years to becoming one of the most vile and disliked men of all time. I'm sure there are worse people, but Harvey Weinstein went from being one of the most powerful people in the world to being completely reviled and losing everything. This is the guy who had Meryl Streep and Oprah on speed dial and married to a woman a thousand times too attractive for him. He now uses a walker and has lost his fortune and his reputation. And his wiener is literally rotting off! In case you didn't know, several of the women who accused him of sexual misconduct all pointed out that he wasn't really interested in sex per se, but just wanted massages. According to some, his hygiene was so poor, he developed an infection on his wiener, which then rotted the flesh after being left untreated. He basically got gangrene on his genitals and was effectively impotent. Jeffrey Jones, aka the dad from Beetlejuice, aka the principal from Ferris Bueller. OJ has to be up there. Jim Jones. He originally stood up for civil rights and then he became a cult leader. From a civil rights leader to cult murderer who was responsible for more than 900 deaths. Roses are red, violets are glorious, don't try to surprise Oscar Pistorius. What job seems to attract a-holes? General attorney here. The answer is general attorney. Loan sharking. It's a job that requires you to be an a-hole. Whoever is supposed to moderate the moderators on Reddit. Boat salesman. Scum of the earth, if you ask me. Uh, morning radio show host. You will never meet a person you'll hate more than a club promoter. It's everything left over from the dregs of douchebag guys that think they are the coolest and spend their 40s buying drinks for their 20-something friends. Military. I'm a retired Air Force vet. 26 years and I saw plenty of a-holes. Retired as fork. Management positions in department stores. Give a weak human a minuscule amount of authority and they act like a wannabe dictator and powerful figure. What's your toxic trait that you're proud of? I can make up my mind that I don't care about someone anymore and immediately just stop caring. No build-up, no debate, no worrying about if I made the right call. Kinda scary because sometimes I start to contemplate doing it with everyone and well, I know that's not a good idea. I know someone who is like that. I can disassociate and ignore bad stuff. It's like turning on an IDGAF switch. Not really proud of it, but it's useful. Live fast, eat trash. Are you a raccoon? I pick apart and analyze to death everything, person, idea, sentence, whatever. My brain only does rabbit hole deep dives, and this is honestly more satisfying than organized thought for me. I clean when mad. The more mad, the more cleaning. I wish I was like that. I really wish I was. I would get so much done. I can function with a criminally low amount of sleep. It's not healthy, but it adds hours to me being able to get things done. It's really helped me career-wise over the years. I draw Homer Simpson's head on pretty much everything. It only takes a few seconds for me to draw a Homer. OP should do writing prompts. Just came here to say this is one of the better questions I've seen on this sub. Agreed. Awesome thread. I obsess over things and it leads to a lot of social anxiety and difficult focusing in most social situations. It's also, however, led me to finding some deeply meaningful skills and hobbies. Hey, good for you, man. What are your thoughts on Twitter shutting down? Guys, Twitter can't shut down. That's where I have the most followers. By the way, follow my Twitter, says Mason Live. Uh, if it does shut down, uh, shoot, I don't really know. Uh, I guess Instagram, <laughs> says Mason. Watching the meltdown and reading increasingly absurd headlines every day was quite entertaining, TBH. 75% of the employees left, accepted the three-month severance. That means around 12% of the employees there on Musk's first day remain. Those still there probably have a good reason, like visa, health insurance, etc. Wow! Seems impossible that this wasn't inevitable. People will just have to do something else while shorting on the toilet. I didn't know it was shutting down. Yeah, you've been on Reddit too much. Oh no! Anyways, Elon should buy TikTok next. He can be the grim reaper of bad social media. No, guys, TikTok is good. You know why? Because Ask MK is on TikTok. 
you can follow us on TikTok at AskMK. But fetish is a nope for you. I'd do anything for love, but I won't do scat. Don't know what it's called, but when a dominatrix in heels stomps on your scrotum. Ah, I can't. Ah, God, I don't. I'm going to throw up. Despite my username, feces. Divorce. I had a few wives that are really into it. <laughs> Sad. Anything I do to a toilet, I won't do to another person or allow another person to do to me. Not into dead goldfish, huh? You do you. When they ask you to cover yourself in dirt and wiggle around on the floor in your underwear. I don't know what it's called, but it's happened three separate times now and I just don't get the appeal. Literally everything already in this thread. If there was a vote for one person to receive immortality, who would win? Really comes down to who would want to live with Keith Richards. <laughs> most likely the most undeserving asshole possible. My old boss, Hamish. So he can watch humanity go extinct and have a miserable eternity. That dude in India with the feeding program feeding two million kids a day or something. I would vote for my worst enemy as a punishment. You won't be able to rest and will see all the people you love die. One after the other. Even your own children. And the children of your children. In a non-stop everlasting nightmare. That one guy's dead wife. <laughs> oh no. I, I, I think I know exactly who you're talking about. Surely, Sir David Attenborough deserves it at this point, right? Uh, no. I don't think David Attenborough deserves that pain. I think we should give it to Keith Richards. I want to see how much older he can look. Which celebrity is considered beautiful, but you just can't see it? A character on some show or game that said the secret of celebrities is they're all actually strange looking or oddly ugly in some special way. I've always remembered that. Drake. I know several women who think he's absolutely gorgeous. Purely on looks, he seems completely unremarkable to me. Drake. Like, why? In what dimension or planet? That one guy who was married to J-Lo. Mark Anthony. Megan Fox's boyfriend. What's his name? MGK looks like a tall 1800s starving newspaper boy. <laughs> Chris Brown. Even before the Rihanna thing, I never understood why people had the hots for him. After Rihanna, even uglier. Adam Levine. He looks like a thumb with glued on ears and glued on patchy face hair that someone else shaved off first. Am I the only one who just doesn't see all the ooing and eyeing over Jared Leto? He looks like he doesn't bathe and there are all the stories of his method acting. Leonardo DiCaprio was so cute and then rapidly aged in the Jack Nicholson. Chrissy Teigen. She's a supermodel? Kylie Jenner. B-word is about to look like Donatella Versace in m about 10 more years. Watch. Who's the character everyone loves but is actually annoying? Tweety Bird from Looney Tunes. So much self-conscious cuteness plus he stirs up stuff just to play the victim. The real world has enough manipulative characters. I don't need one in my cartoons. So I just asked my wife this question and she immediately said Snuffleupagus from Sesame Street. I absolutely had to ask why that was and she said when she was a child she loved Big Bird and she always wanted to be Big Bird's best friend. But she felt like Snuffleupagus was always in the way because on the show Big Bird would always say Snuffy was his best friend. She even told me that till this day she had a minor hatred for woolly mammoths because they reminded her of Snuffleupagus. Learn something new in marriage every day. Serena from Gossip Girl. This girl has no self-control. She's always hooking up with someone, even if they're married. Nate's cousin and Nate himself, like he was just like her for cheating on Blair. She has the style and the look for the stand factor, and that's it. Frosty the Snowman. I can't explain, but that mother father gets on my nerves big time. I fork and hate Piper in Orange is the New Black. To be honest, the whole show was a stuff show, and I don't know why it was such a zeitgeist when it was coming out. Raymond. <laughs> nice. Peppa Pig. At the end of the day, she's a spoiled brat. Bro fat shames her dad. What's your favorite anime series? Old Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. King of the Hill. He's got the right spirit. Mine is the Big O. Ooh, I miss the Big O. Dragon Ball Z. Death Note. 10 out of 10 anime. Mob Psycho 100 is such an uplifting gem of a show. Psychopaths. When I want to chill, Natsume Yujinko. I hope I got that right. One Punch Man Season 1. Why did nobody say JoJo's Bizarre Adventure? It's such a good anime. All of, all of the seasons, all of the parts, all so good. <clears throat> what would you do with your life if you no longer had to worry about money? Travel and help the needy. Find something else to worry about. Get my own house. That is the goal. What I wouldn't do for my own house. Not go to work. I would run a food blog. I want to farm aquarium snails. Basically the same as what I'm doing now, but without stressing every financial decision. What would be the best thing that could happen to you right now? Fall into an uncomplicated loving relationship. Unexpected $2 billion debited right to the bank account to be used by me only. Winning the lottery. Getting some free time. Free cheeseburger. Unconditional sudden self-love. Same. Just to feel a general feeling of happiness for a whole day. A whole day? Brother, you're asking for a little too much. What's the thing that you miss the most from your childhood? Free time and a lack of responsibility. The joy of everything. Family gatherings. My grandparents are all dead. My cousins, etc. are all grown up and married with their own families. We don't do large gatherings anymore with the kids table and stuff. I hated them growing up and now that I'm older, I miss them. 
summer vacation. My innocence. No cell phones or social media. 8-bit video games, Transformers, and playing hide and seek using the entire neighborhood as the zone. I don't really miss anything. I'm honestly pretty glad my childhood is dead and gone. Childhood sucks. I don't really relate to all the nostalgia other people have. The feeling of being taken care of and being acknowledged without having to put in so much effort. What motto do you live by? Do not be sorry, be better. Eh, fork it. Maximum effect with minimum of effort. Everything goes better with a smile. Don't fall in love with potential. Take it a minute at a time. The past can't be changed, but what you do in this minute can change your future. Fake it till you make it. If things don't go the way that they should, then it should go the way that they do. So accept things you can't control. It reduces a lot of stress. For shits and giggles. What is a fashion trend you absolutely hate? Wearing pajamas is regular clothes. Takes me off guard. Nah, brother, that stuff's good. I love wearing my PJs out in the grocery store. It's fun. I have ones that have little moose on them. And then I also have one with dog bones and cute doggy faces and paw prints. Fake pockets. Torn and ripped jeans. Seriously, they've been around way too long. Fast fashion generates a mind-boggling amount of waste. Mullets. Trends. They're for the anxious and insecure. Puffy sleeve dress worn with sneakers or trainers. All of them. We should all dress up like rocks. Crocs. There's so many more other attractive and comfy shoes. Don't care. I like Crocs. Skinny jeans. Low-rise pants. What is one TV intro that you'll never skip? Scooby-Doo. Especially what's new Scooby-Doo. You know, late 90s, early 2000s. I think that's when it was around. Early 2000s for sure. But here in What's New Scooby-Doo was Pog all the time. It was great. Psych. Mash and Adventure Time. Has to be Game of Thrones. The intro actually helps put each individual episode in context. Parks and Rec. Better call Saul. It's already short enough. Long drawn out intros don't really add much to shows. That's like the worst answer of all time. I just, I don't want to watch the intro of the guy's head going It's not good. Next, Futurama. Especially since the intro is so short and can Contains different gags. Bob's Burgers. The Golden Girls. Twin Peaks. Malcolm in the Middle. What cheers you up instantly? Eating shredded cheese at 3 a.m. It really helps. Especially mozzarella cheese. Dogs. I have to agree here. Sometimes I'll pause my recording mid-session and just go over to my bed and cuddle with my dog for like five minutes and then come back. Someone's blushing when they see me. Every time my husband smiles at me, my lifespan goes up by three years. <laughs> Bear boobs, especially. Bear boobs. My cat, because he's very fluffy, fat, cute, kind of stupid, orange, has a nice meow, and finally, his name is Barzini, just like the one in The Godfather. Also, my dog, because she's always happy to see me and loves me a lot, and I love her. She's kind of stupid, too, and due to the thin fur she wears, thick clothes in this time of year and looks ridiculous. The blood of my enemies. Looking at greeting cards and looking at holiday decorations up and down the aisle of stores. Mario Kart Wii music. Well, it is the best Mario Kart. Better than Double Dash, for sure. Bed music. You wake up early in the 1800s in London. What is the first thing that you do? Find some clothes, because if I learned one thing from Terminator, it's that time travel doesn't like clothes too much. Die of the common cold. Buy a house. Open the window and say to the person below, you there, what day is today? Go see an execution. Grim, I know, but archaic forms of punishment, execution, and torture fascinate me. I'm traveling to Bath to track down Jane Austen. Move to a big mansion with a sexy gamekeeper. Go back to sleep. Scream because I'm about to be purchased. What's a movie that never fails to make you cry. The Green Mile. OMG, I ball at this movie. Marley and Me. A Dog's Purpose. I was crying and sobbing like an MF when I watched it back and then, well, it always makes me cry. We humans don't deserve dogs. Forrest Gump. Every single time. Up. Mainly the beginning. Interstellar. And Up. The It's Not Your Fault scene in Goodwill Hunting. Inside Out. Gets the old waterworks going every time. Take her to the moon for me, okay? Chicken Run. Oh man, that really brought me back. I remember that movie. The Fault in Our Stars. What movie has an Epic opening scene. Star Wars Episode 4. A New Hope. Casino Royale. Saving Private Ryan's D-Day scene. It's not the opening scene per se, but it's the start of the story and not a framing device. The Dark Knight. The Fellowship of the Ring. The Two Towers as well. The SpongeBob movie. This is actually the most correct answer so far. Children of Men. Mad Max Fury Road. The Hangover. You've been granted the ability to delete one word from the English language for a year. Which word do you remove and why? Oh boy, I can't wait to see what trending word this month people choose to get rid of. What? Oh, the word's gone. I get it. I get it. Four. <laughs> You bastard! I just think it would create a lot of chaos. Cringe! I will vote for this. Literally. 
Kardashian. Like, there are people who would not be able to speak without it. Woke, I'm so sick of hearing my in-laws use it. Somersault, never could do a good one. I can go a year without anyone challenging me to do one. Musk, because it smells. Pronouns, that way nobody can argue about using the wrong pronoun accidentally. Moist, what is this? 2012? Nobody cares about the word moist anymore. What are you thankful for? Day-to-day -day life with the people I care for the most. That I bought my house in 2019. You, my cat and cats in general. That I have a roof over my head and food on the table. Took that for granted before. Not having any debt. It's a global crisis and the internet is going down forever in 24 hours. What do you download? Wikipedia for obvious reasons and so much obscure filth as I can find. It'll have value. You're going to download all of Wikipedia? Okay. Gmod add-ons. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna take longer than 48 hours to download all that. All the cute anime mommies with big milkers. And visual novels. Okay. <laughs> freaking weirdo. Cat videos. My entire Steam library onto a new laptop. All of my financial data. ASMR videos. Flash games. I'm buying a new hard drive just to store it. You wake up June 15th, 1997. What do you do? Write a letter to Princess Diana emphasizing the importance of wearing a seatbelt. Go buy a PS1. It was just called a PlayStation. No one called it PlayStation 1 back then. Edit. Born 1985. But I'm from the future, so I know it's a PS1. He's got you good there. It's a Sunday. Next Saturday's UK National Lottery numbers are 1, 17, 20, 26, 27, 30, 44. Prize is just over 8.5 million pounds. So I buy a ticket. Then I tell Diana not to go to Paris with Dodie. Get ready for the first of many huge disappointments from the Minnesota Vikings next year. Partay like it's 1999. Be confused as hell because I was born in 2001. Amazon stock, Apple stock, and in 2008, Bitcoin. Back out of my roommate situation with Bill. Move far away and never talk to him again. What the hell did Bill do? What's a word from your language? Language that you think the world should adopt. I guess it's translated as actuin, but it basically means death before death. I know it doesn't make much sense, but it's like a person who is born dead yet living. So like a zombie, but not a zombie. A man without purpose. See, I can do English. Kutsch. Like a cuddle or a hug, but more special. Skoden. It's a contraction of let's go then. Use like a more violent step above, hold my beer. If you're ever on a res and hear someone shout that, stuff's about to go down. Fork. Or has it already? Fork, yes. Fredadgismzies. Literally Friday cozy time. It's when the whole family get together on the living room couch with snacks, candy, and drinks, etc., and watch a movie together. Yeet. This BK Gaming underscore YT guy has some of the worst answers to these questions. I think I, I think I saw one of his other ones from an earlier post, and it was bad, too. What are you avoiding right now? Work, of course. Studying for finals. The cold air. Men. At all costs. All they do is ruin a young girl's life. No idea. I've avoided it so well, I've forgotten what I'm avoiding. What song do you want to be played at your funeral? Alive by Pearl Jam. Ironic. Tub thumping. Dream On by Aerosmith. Just mess with people. Pop goes the weasel. Played slowly. Pumped up kicks. Then all of my loved ones realize the doors are barricaded from the outside. Never gonna give you up. Never gonna let you down. Seabat. Oh boy. While my guitar gently weeps. What famous person would have been great on social media if they were on it before their death? Mark Twain and Winston Churchill. Mozart. He was apparently pretty wild from what I understand. Dude would have been like Logan Paul and Andrew Tate, but he would also be a genius. Yeah, unlike Logan Paul or Andrew Tate. I imagine Michael Jackson would have been a hit. Or any famous rulers back in time, such as the kings and queens and our first presidents. I would love to see what George Washington would tweet. Oscar Wilde would have been a threat. Amy Winehouse. William Shakespeare would <laughs> people off daily. Charles Manson. Robin Williams. What? I mean, Robin Williams probably had social media before he died, right? Yeah, he died in 2014. Twitter was around way before that, buddy. Probably Da Vinci. What video game has your favorite music? Final Final Fantasy 8, man. That forkin' song from Balam Garden? Gosh darn. Final Fantasy 9. Grand Theft Auto Vice City. Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. Fallout 3. Tekken 3. Grand Theft Auto. Which one? There's a lot of them. Persona 5 Royal. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. And Life is Strange. Super Mario Sunshine. Pokemon. Yeah. Pokemon, sure, yeah. I uh, think like Gen 3 and 4 and 5 all had banger music. Gen 1 and 2, you know, it was before their time. Not the best. But Gen 3? Oh, the trumpets! in Ruby and Sapphire and Emerald. Wow! Loving it. Minecraft, Halo, and Mario. What is your favorite animal? A liger. Pretty much my favorite animal. Dogs. Dogs and cats. How about you, OP? Capybara, King Cobra, and Axolotl. Thanks for asking. Polar bears. They are so cute. Nothing is cuter than polar bear cubs. Unfortunately, they might not exist a couple decades from now. Rabbit. Username checks out. Hippopotamus, for sure. Koalas, because of how chill they are. Username checks out, for sure. Elephants. Gentle giants and so majestic. Honey badger. Them be crazy 
easy. Also, I need to pet one. How can you instantly someone off? It's actually pronounced Jif. Shut up. You're a wizard, Anakin. Gandalf, probably. What are we in? 2012? Oh my god. We've seen it all before. Honk your horn at a red light when you're in front of someone when they didn't even do anything and just keep doing it until the green light. That's just mean. Oh my god. I would be I, that would work. I'd be pissed. Drive slowly and in the left lane. Deliberately fart in their face. Play that forking. Oh no, 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 no. Song on my phone speaker. Tell them the Nightmare Before Christmas is a stupid, overrated movie. Ask them if Dumbledorf <laughs> ever found the ring. <laughs> Look at your phone when they're talking. This is Reddit. Just post something. What is a sound associated with your current or previous job that you now hate? In a call center, the bing sound in your headset when you have an incoming call. Who still hears a ticket printer in their sleep? The incoming call sound and the Slack notifications. Oh my god. When my producer, Dave, sends me a Slack notification, I want to throw my phone across the god dang room. But then he just tells me that I'm doing a great job and that he appreciates me and I'm like, oh, thanks, Dave. I want to give you a big hug. Even if you are Australian. Vent high pressure alarms. Critical care nurse. Ding, fries are done. Ding, fries are done. The sound of a copier beeping. The Slack direct message notification sound. Christmas music from working in a mall. The sound of online takeout orders coming in constantly. My colleagues laugh. Alarm clock before I have to be there. The gas station sound when the door opens. But except at a boba store. Who are you getting really effing tired of hearing about? I don't know about person, but hearing the word influencer every 10 seconds has been taking its toll on me. You and me both, brother. I am so sick of hearing that word. It's oh, it's done. We're done with it. Let's, let's, let's use something else. My cat complaining about the state of her food bowl. It's full, cat. Leave me alone. I'm deaf, so nothing. Okay, well, what are you tired of reading about and or lip reading about and or seeing people sign about? My mom's best friend's daughter who should be my role model. Machine Gun Kelly and Megan Fox. Everything I know about them is against my will. I feel like that about the Cartrashians. My best friend's ex. This is the first time I'm hearing about them and I'm already tired of it. Oh, get ready to hate them even more. There's this one time. Kanye West and Elon Musk. I too am sick of hearing them. I'm even more sick of Kanye's anti-Semitism. So if we could stop talking about both of them and just ignore them and maybe they'll stop being stupid and offensive and anti-Semitic. How I can cure my autoimmune diseases without medication using supplements. Ah, uh, yes. Natural cures like essential oils and sage and sticking a leaf blower up your nose. Yep, that, all that works for sure. Donald Trump, Elon Musk, Will Smith, and the royal family. Have we heard from Will Smith since he slapped Chris Rock? I don't think we have. <laughs> the rest of them? Yeah, absolutely. I'm sick of hearing about all of them. Trump, Kanye, Andrew Tate. The trifecta of annoying and bad people. Who is one celebrity that nobody hates? Maggie Smith. Alan Rickman. May he rest in peace. Bob Ross. Tony Hawk. I've never heard any bad about him. Betty White. David Attenborough. He's a national treasure. That he is. Weird Al Yankovic. Danny DeVito. Hopefully. Hey, don't put that bad juju into the air. Danny DeVito's a treasure as far as I know. Thank you everybody for watching. My name is Says Mason and I'll see you around. Bye-bye.